Most of us like a good hard work story. Most of us like an inspirational story because it helps to uplift us a little bit. We like to see somebody overcome the odds and the barriers and the obstacles and we feel like we can relate to it. And in this draft class, you're going to hear about Shaquem Griffin and all that he has had to overcome. And legitimately so, and he deserves all the attention that he gets for that. But a dude that I feel like kind of goes under the radar in terms of technically playing with a disability and being able to overcome and work hard and really work and work and work to the point where he went from a walk-on to a legit NFL prospect, Troy Fumagalli from Wisconsin doesn't get enough buzz to me. I mean, this is a dude, I think he's missing, what, his left index finger? He's playing with nine fingers, I'm just saying. I know it's not the same as playing without an entire hand, but the dude is missing a finger, for Christ's sakes. Can he get a little love, too? Well, let's see how much love I give him as an NFL prospect. Um, What do I like about Fumagalli? He's got adequate size, six foot five, almost 250 pounds. Um... He could use a little bit more weight on his body, I'll grant you that, but maybe five, five to ten pounds at the very most. He's pretty close to there. Average length arms, I think it's like 32-inch arms. That's only average for the position, which can impact him sometimes in terms of catch radius. It can impact him sometimes in terms of being able to get off of press coverage, impact him sometimes as a blocker, but he's done well to work around some of those disadvantages that he has. Uh, really quality catcher of the football. Makes the routine catch look pretty simple. Catches the ball away from his body, consistently catches the ball with his hands. And all the more impressive when he figure he's got nine fingers instead of ten. It's not like he's missing a pinky. You're talking about an index finger. You do a lot with that index finger, especially when it comes to catching the football, especially when you think about where the football hits in relation to your hands. Like that's one of the first contact points right there. And he's taken that away, and he's still able, like, like, look at that. That's a big difference right there. And he's still able to be a consistent, reliable catcher of the football. And he doesn't make a ton of difficult catches, I will say that. But he makes almost every single basic routine fundamental catch, and, and that's pretty damn good. He's a quality route runner, good-sized route tree. He's got good footwork. He's able to get in and out of his breaks quickly. Um... Not a great athlete or anything like that, but the quality of his route running at least offers him a chance to be able to make it in the NFL as some type of a level of a contributor. He's a decent blocker. He's not the best blocker at the position in this class, but he's not bad. He's good at as a pull blocker. He's good at seal blocking. And you think about it, this dude's coming from Wisconsin where they live everything they do on offense based off of the power run game. So you cannot play the tight end position there for where Fumagalli did and expect that he's not going to be able to block at all. A challenge comes in uh, when he's trying to move defenders off of the spot, especially if he's helping on defensive linemen. He's not an incredibly strong guy. That strength, that power, the pure physicality just does not show up. Uh, also with the blocking, even though he's good on some of the technique blocks, he can at times get himself out of position. He misses some of his blocks. But... I'm kind of nitpicking there in terms of especially compared to other tight ends in this class. He's got an adequate but not great catch radius. Like I say, he's not somebody that's overwhelmingly athletic, so high pointing the ball and doing those type of things is not necessarily going to be his bag. But if the ball is generally in his vicinity in his zip code, he can go out and get it with his hands. He can adjust to balls that are off target, balls that are poorly thrown, and that's good. Um, also, you look at this guy, this is a guy that went from, as it seems like a lot of Wisconsin players do, a walk-on to a legit NFL prospect and was a really productive player over the past couple of years. And where you could say this negative trait or that negative trait could really hold him back, you know, sometimes it's hard to measure the size of somebody's heart, their work ethic, their determination, their drive, their perseverance, their ability to want and clearly Fumagalli's got a great ability to want to go at a quality program like Wisconsin from a walk-on to a multi-year starter and a really productive player speaks volumes to how bad the guy wants it. So I can't imagine 
you'll hear anything other than good things about his leadership, about his desire and love for the game of football. And those are the type of guys that you want in your locker room. It might not be the sexiest trade. It might not be the thing that really stands out and that you can always quantify. But damn it, Arl, it is hard to root against these guys sometimes. And when you're talking about investing money in guys, you want to know that they're going to work for it and that they're going to want it. And this guy does. But then you also have to worry about just because you have this great work ethic, sometimes work ethic can help and sometimes it doesn't. And you look at him, he struggles to separate. Uh, his lack of athleticism allows defenders to stay close up on him pretty consistently. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, when it comes to the blocking, he's not a very overly physical player, which is a little surprising to me, seeing how he came from Wisconsin, where by nature, the Badgers want to play the physical brand of Big Ten football. He wasn't that physical. He's also not that physical against uh, man coverage, and he can struggle against press coverage more than you would uh, want to see out of a tight end. He needs to better utilize his hands to create space. Um, he does have a nose for finding holes in the defense, but it's primarily that lack of physicality as a route runner and that lack of just uh, athleticism that really concerns me. He, he is not an athlete. He really isn't, I mean, if we're being real. He lacks any real burst off the line. He's slow starting. And even when he's at top speed, if you call it top speed, he's slow running. Uh, his lack of speed on the football field really limits him in terms of what he can do. I have major concerns about just how often he'll be able to separate. He might be a more effective weapon against zone than he would necessarily be man-to-man. -man. Um, and then on top of that, that quickness and speed that he lacks also shows up in terms of run-after catch or the lack of run-after catch ability. He runs with effort, but he's not very physical. He's not going to break a ton of tackles. He's not really going to make anybody miss in the open field. Um, so once you throw him the ball, as soon as somebody gets their hands on him, it's pretty much over. So he's more about the spot and the catch than he is about getting the ball and turning up field and making plays. He's also had a couple of minor injuries throughout his career. He's missed some games. Um, so you, you wonder if he's going to have trouble holding up or if it's always going to be this or that or everything else. Um, he feels like more of a role player at the NFL level. And I, I think that's a fair assessment. I'd be stunned if he totally washed out of the league in a couple of years because he's a work hard type of guy. He's got some blocking ability and he's a reliable catcher of the football. So worst case scenario, you've got yourself potentially an inline blocking tight end, a number two type of guy that you have on your team for six to eight years. That's really what he feels like to me. He, those are the type of guys you spend a day three pick on. And I've got a high fourth round grade on him, and I feel like that's right. You talk about in the fourth round and day three in general, you're looking for a couple of things. You're looking for guys that have potentially massive upside. Maybe they have a concern off the field or they have concerns in other places. Or you're looking for safe, kind of high floor, low ceiling guys that can provide you bang for your buck and value out of where you take them. You feel like they are low risk, maybe medium reward and not high reward, but you feel like they will be guys that contribute to the program. They will be guys that will be able to give you something. And that's what Fumagalli feels like to me. He's a guy that you take somewhere on day three, he makes your roster, and worst case scenario, he's a guy you play on special teams, he's a guy that is an inline blocker for you, and he's a number two possession type of tight end.